Okay, so we're going to have a quick look at binding posts and banana plugs. Now, if you're doing any stuff in your lab, and for example, here I made a, a modification to an ATX computer power supply to give me 12, 5, and 3 volts. And uh, you can see it's set at 12 volts, got a little switch on off. And if, if you're going to do something like that, make your own little do-it-yourself stuff, it's going to be really nice and easy to be able to use stuff like binding posts and banana plugs to quickly plug stuff in. So, for example, I've got little jumpers. I can plug into my, if I need 12 volts, just plug it in and you're ready to go. Okay. So, very helpful. <clears throat> and what I thought I'd do is give you some uh, ideas about using them, how to use them, and how best to apply them. So, um, what you can get, you know, if you go on Amazon or something, you can get a big box of many binding posts and banana plugs. And uh, I just want to mention some things you need to think about. So we'll start with the banana plugs. Now, <clears throat> these are pretty much designed for big cables, okay? People use them for like audio cables, um, you know, number 10, number 12 wire. Uh, if you're working in like an electronic stuff, you're probably not going to be using wire that big. You might be using, you know, like um, in this case, maybe a number 16 gauge wire. So um, just keep in mind, if you're going to use a banana plug like this, you're going to want to use big wire. And for example, here's like a number 16. Now... First, let's take a look at the construction of these things. Again, they're very inexpensive, and you need to know some things about how they're constructed. So this, is, this red plastic is basically screwed on, so what you do is you turn the metal part clockwise, and it's only like a half a turn, and it comes loose, okay? So now you've got your top and your uh, plug, and if you look in here, you can see it's just plastic. There's only a few threads in here to match the few threads on here. So, you know, it's, there's not a lot of, you know, it's not a quality thing. I mean, it's not like you have a, uh, a copper metal thread in here that you um, thread it into and it's very strong. Uh, you got to be careful about this. You screw it in, it's like a half a turn. What you don't want to do is kind of bang this because you can strip the thread. So, um... So now you unscrew it, and you're going to have to figure how you're going to use this with your wire. So, for example, here's a number 16, and you can see here it's got these holes. It's got a hole up here and another hole down here, and the purpose of those is you've got these set screws, okay? Um, this set came with set screws, and you put the screw in there and it's supposed to clamp the wire. Now if you look in here, you can see this is a fairly big hole and you've got a number 16 wire and it really, there's a lot of room in there. So what you can do, um, you can see this is just a, a tube with an end to it. So if you put that in here and all the way to the bottom, there's really, it's just sitting there. And at best, you might have the, the tip of these wires touching metal, but the rest of it, not so much, okay? So um, the problem is, if you look here at the uh, diameter of the wire versus the di diameter of the barrel, uh, the set screw isn't going to help you at all. It's not going to clamp this wire. It will clamp the number 16 gauge insulation, but, you know, you're, you're kind of relying on whatever this is touching down in the bottom. So, again, this is for big wire. Um, I'm not saying it's not going to work. I mean, it may be fine for whatever you use it for. But, if, you know, if you're going to use high current applications, um, you might want to think twice about it. Um, and, again, you get a bunch of these little um, set screws, and they're kind of annoying trying to put them in. But you can screw it in. And you can see you just kind of clamp this insulation, but the one down here, not so much. Now, you can also think about, uh, if you do want to use this, 
maybe put a big bead of solder on this. Heat up your soldering iron, put a big glob of solder, and then fit it down in here, and then maybe this set screw might work. Okay, so here what I've done is I've put a big blob of solder on my number 16 gauge wire, and I'm going to, I've got a, a set screw in here, and you can see I can put it in here, I push it all the way down, and get my screwdriver, and you can see that if I screw it in, it will stick, which means it's got a really good hold on this thing. So it should be good to go. Just make sure your blob of solder isn't too big or else the screw won't go in and you won't be able to fit the plastic on here. But uh, in this case, it just fits. So you're good to go. So that should be fine if you have it um, tightened up really well. And then you can maybe add a second set screw for the um, insulation. But, you know, just keep it in mind that's one way to get around the uh, size problem. Um, but in general, um, you can get it to work. Um, I've actually measured this entire system, um, the milliohms, and it's only about 10 milliohms um, when you set up. So it'll, it might work fine for you. Just be aware there's other alternatives. Uh, you might want to get a pre-made... Um, jumper wire which has a banana on one end and whatever else you need on the other end um, because what this doesn't have is it's not stackable okay so you can only fit for example one wire in here and you can't stack others so uh, you can get pre-made jumpers that are stackable and you can add multiple uh, if you need that, you can add multiple uh, jumpers on it. So again, um, you know, it's whatever, it depends on what you need, but just be careful uh, about using it. Now, when you get these, um, the how, how firm it is inside this binding post uh, depends on, if you can see here, these, uh, the metal here is split. And the idea is that it should be bulging out uh, enough so that it fits in here. This one barely, you know, there's barely any resistance, okay? So, um, again, keep that in mind. It might be a lot of resistance, a lot more than you want, or it might be very little. What you can do um, to get around that is if you take this metal connector and put it down and maybe tap it with a hammer, it might splay these out a little bit to get you more contact resistance. And vice versa, if it's too big, maybe just squeeze it with some pliers and you might be able to adjust it. Again, it's a, it's a workaround, but it may be fine for what you need. Now, binding post. Here's a binding post and you can see it's, um, you can unscrew it and you can slide a connector such as this. You can put a connector in here and tighten it down. Okay. The problem is uh, if you get a spade lug like this, it might not be big enough to fit here. Okay. So again, you got to think about that. You got to make sure you got your spade lugs big enough to fit in here. In this case, it doesn't fit. It's too small, so you might have to push it out and make it bigger. Um, and also, this is plastic threaded, okay? So don't count on a lot of, you know, quality here. Um, but otherwise, it might be fine for whatever purposes you have. So like I said, um, the diameter of the um, binding post, if you want to put a spade lug, you can see it's about five millimeters. And that's equivalent to like a number 10 screw, I believe. So make sure if you get spade lugs, they're big enough because typically um, the ones you get are smaller, designed for smaller screw size. So just keep that in mind. So anyway, that's about it for, for binding posts and um, banana plugs. Something simple, but there's a lot to be considered. So anyway, hope that helps. Take care and have a really good day. Thanks.